When Jody and I began this investigation, we didn't know any actresses. <laughs> Trying to reach them involved practically many investigations unto themselves. But slowly, we made connections. And to our surprise, one of his biggest stars, Gwyneth Paltrow, was among those who had a story. In fact, she became one of our first secret sources. And she remained a trusted source even when Weinstein showed up at her house very early for a party one day. Scared, she hid in the bathroom and sent us frantic text um, asking what she should do if he cornered her and demanded to know if she was participating in our investigation. But even as we accumulated sources, we faced many challenges. Victims were terrified to speak on the record. And as we would learn, often in, in very awkward moments of reporting, some of them were legally prohibited from speaking with us. In the summer of 2017, I drove to a suburb of New York in search of a woman who had worked at, the, at Weinstein's first company, Miramax, in 1990. I had heard that she had disappeared from the company after a troubling encounter, likely a sexual assault with Weinstein. I'd been reaching out to her at her place of work, but she wasn't responding. I figured I'd leave a handwritten note for one of her family members who lived in this suburban home. And when I got there, the person who answered the door was actually the woman herself. I can't believe you found me, she said. I've been waiting for this knock on my door for 25 years. And yet, as I quickly learned, she had been muzzled through a secret settlement. If she spoke to me, she would face serious financial consequences. It was one of the first hints of a long financial trail of payoffs that Weinstein had made to cover his tracks. An alleged predator was coming into focus. And as we continued our reporting, we realized that the real moral horror of the Weinstein story was that no one had stopped him. Slowly, we would uncover the individuals and institutions that had been complicit in his abuse, including his brother and longtime business partner, Bob Weinstein, who ultimately granted us extensive interviews for this book. Some people in the company did try to stop Weinstein. In fact, another one of our most valuable secret sources was Weinstein's own corporate accountant of 30 years. So desperate was he to do something that he slipped us key internal records that helped reveal the truth about the boss's treatment of women. There were the surprising figures who helped bring the truth to light, like this corporate accountant. There were also surpri surprising figures who helped try to cover it up. As we closed in on our story, Weinstein barged into the New York Times in one of his final dramatic efforts to try and stop us. By his side was Lisa Bloom, one of the most famous feminist attorneys in the United States. After building a lucrative career representing victims of sexual harassment and assault, she had crossed sides to work and help Weinstein help keep his alleged predation hidden. Weinstein had also retained an investigative firm made up of former Israeli spies. The agents adopted fake identities and tried to manipulate us and our sources. If they succeeded in stopping our story, they would receive a $300,000 bonus. As we were preparing to go to press, we only had one victim on the record. We had hoped that all of the actresses would hold hands and jump together, but it wasn't playing out that way. In the end, we asked Ashley Judd to be the only actress in our first story. She was at the dentist of all places when we made the official request by phone. She asked if she could take a day to think about it. She went for a run. She's Christian. She prayed to her God. And then she called back. I'm prepared to be a named source in your investigation, she said. Women have been talking about Harvey for a long time. It's beyond time to talk about the problem publicly. One of the treats of doing this book was getting, getting time to share so many of the dramatic moments that happened on our side of the investigation as, as it was playing out. We have also been able to report out more of what happened on Weinstein's side. Within hours of our story being published, the board of his company held an emergency meeting as it scrambled to respond. 
We know this because we got, we obtained the notes of this conference call. Weinstein's brother could see the writing on the wall. You're finished, Bob told him. But Weinstein was determined to stay at the company and fight. He insisted that other feminists like Lisa Bloom and dozens of women's organizations would come to his defense. In fact, he had promised that their support would be so great that he actually said, there will be a movement. <laughs> he was right about that. But it wasn't the kind of movement that he was envisioning. Like everyone in this room, Jody and I watched with wonder as the dam broke and women around the world stepped forward with their own accounts of sexual harassment and abuse. How did we respond? We kept reporting. In December 2018, I sat in a diner at a, a booth in a diner in Palo Alto with Christine Blasey Ford. It had been less than two months since she had testified before the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee about an alleged sexual assault by Brett Kavanaugh. She showed up to breakfast with a baseball hat pulled down over her eyes. She was still living in hiding because of death threats. And as she began to talk, I realized that hers was one of the most complicated she said stories we had ever encountered. And her, really, and her experience really encompassed so many of the confusing questions and complications of the Me Too movement. So as Joyce and I sit down and prepare to discuss this more, I'd like to come back to Jody's and my children and also to yours and to our grandchildren. What are we going to tell them about this Me Too period we have all lived through? Will we say, oh, that was just a blip and then things went back to the way they'd always been? And they will nod and say, yeah, that still happens in my school. That still happens in my workplace. Or will we be able to say, and will they be able to stay with astonishment, really, mom? It used to be that a waitress serving hamburgers could be groped by her boss, and people just thought that was normal? Or will they be able to say, I was there when things changed? Happy to happy to proceed with conversation. Yeah. <laughs>